Hey there, welcome to yet another interesting video. In this video, we are going to talk about the five important parameters about the low voltage switchgear. By knowing this, you will be able to understand the low voltage switchgear more clearly. You will understand the meaning of each and every parameter which is very, very important. And by the end of this video, you will be able to actually explain these parameters to your colleagues, to your friends and to other people as well. So definitely make sure you watch it till the end. Moving on, uh, let's talk about the rated insulation voltage uh, or it is abbreviated as UI. Again, unit is volts or kilovolts. Now, what is this? It is the RMS withstand voltage value assigned to the equipment or to a part of it characterizing the specified withstand capability of the insulation. Now, you might find the uh, definition a little confusing. I'll simplify it. Uh, don't worry. So there could be a situation where my system is imbalanced. Okay, maybe one phase is drawing a huge lot of load, other two are not. In that case, there would be imbalance and uh, maybe my system has to carry additional load of voltage for some time. My system is rated for, let's say, 230 volts, but because of this imbalance, maybe 300 volts, uh, the Im voltage imbalance is coming. In that scenario, my switchgear should be capable of carrying that voltage for long term. Okay, the word is very important, long term. Now, IEC do not specify long term means is it one hour, two hour, three hours, or that that's not defined by IEC. But the switchgear must be capable of carrying that additional voltage for long time. And of course, uh, how do you prove that? By conducting the different test on the switchgear. You will also find this parameter mentioned on uh, the catalog or on the nameplate of the low voltage switchgear rated insulation voltage. Again, it would be higher than that of the rated voltage. Then moving on, we have rated impulse withstand voltage, which is uh, abbreviated as UIMP, rated impulse withstand voltage. The unit of this is KV peak. Now, why peak? Now, there is a difference. You need to understand this. When we say impulse, it is a peak. It remains in the system for a very short time. It is a transient. It will not remain for a long time. But when we saw the previous parameter, the rated insulation voltage, it is there for a long time. And this is a RMS value, root mean square value of AC. Now, for those who don't know what is root mean square. So what is AC? AC is basically a sine wave. Okay. Now, if I take the value of the positive peak, I may not get the value correct because that's not the average value. So what we do, we do an average out of the whole waveform and what we get is the RMS value. And we always consider RMS value for the insulation voltage, the average out value. And I have a dedicated video explaining what is RMS value. Uh, you can go and check it out on YouTube uh, if you're interested in knowing more about that. But uh, just to remember, what is RMS value? RMS value is the averaged out value of the sine wave. And that is what we use for insulation voltage. But when we say impulse voltage, it is always a peak value because that peak is coming. It remains in the system for a very short time and then it will die down. Right. So hence the unit is KV peak. Now let us understand what is rated impulse withstand voltage. Now, it is the rating used to indicate the insulation strength or the withstand capabilities of the switchgear against the transient over voltage. Now, there can be a situation, okay, let's say there is a lightning stroke. Now, that lightning stroke will cause a sudden impulse in the system, sudden impulse in the voltage. And of course, my switchgear should withstand that. If my switchgear is not withstanding that, then it could cause it could cause damage. My switchgear will burn down, and that fault will replicate into the different systems. So certainly, it's a very important parameter, and my switchgear should be able to withstand this impulse, withstand this transients that are coming into the system. Uh, these are inevitable; it will come for sure. You cannot avoid it 100%. You can slow, surely reduce the amount of that but it will come in the system 100%. So my switchgear should be able to withstand that as well. Now, what causes transient over voltage? There are two major reasons for that. One, lightning strokes, or this is what we call as the external factor. Lightning is not in my hand. It could 
happen anytime, anywhere. So that causes the impulse. And you see the waveform here. It's a sudden spike in the voltage. That's why it's impulse. And it remains for a very short time. And slowly, slowly, it will uh, die down. The external cause for this is lightning strikes. Now, when lightning strikes happens, the impulse voltage is very high in that case. The second uh, cause is, second important cause is the load switching. This is internal factor. Now, this happens when we switch the different loads. So maybe you're turning on a transformer or turning it off. That will cause a sudden spike in the voltage. And in especially in low voltage, we have multiple reasons for load switching. So if you are switching the transformer, you would see a spike. Maybe you are switching uh, a very huge motor uh, with high capacity. That would cause a problem. Uh, welding machines, for sure, that draw huge current. So there would be problem with that. Uh, even switching the inverters will cause that problem. And there is a lot many uh, loads that can cause this uh, impulse in the system. And if my switchgear is not capable of sustaining this, then there is a problem. So that's why it's very important and also defined by IEC that switchgear should be able to withstand this impulse voltages, this transient voltages that system may see on a regular basis. Clear? So that is rated impulse withstand voltage or UIMP. So the first has to be the rated current. Now for other things you can say rated current is the current for which my system is designed, for which my switch gears are designed. But in low voltage, especially the recent IEC that has uh, released, uh, the IEC has clearly distinguished the rated current into two different parameters. One, the rated current of the assembly, I and A. And second is a rated current of a circuit. I and C. These are the two bifurcation uh, done by the recent IEC that has uh, come out. So let us understand these two terms here. First is rated current of the assembly or I and A. What is it? It is the maximum continuous current that the switch gear is designed to carry safely without exceeding its temperature limits. Straightforward definition. I have a switch gear assembly. Now what is switch gear assembly that uh, uh, we will learn? So I have a switch gear and my system's rated current is, let's say, 4000 amperes. Then for sure, my switch gear should be able to carry that current continuously. Now, this is very important. It is a continuous current. Okay, it's not an impulse. It's not short time, but it is a continuous current. So my switch gear should be able to withstand that current continuously without exceeding its temperature limits. Now, these temperature limits again defined by the IEC standard. So just to give you one example, IEC will say for bus bar, this is the maximum temperature it should go. Beyond that, if it is going, then it's not a good design of the switch gear. So they, uh, the limits of different different parts of switch gear should uh, remain in the specified limit by IEC, even when you are carrying the 4000 amperes continuously. If that is not happening, there is a deviation coming in, then that switch gear design is not suitable for your application. This is very crucial parameter because if you get it wrong, uh, then probably there will be heating issues, uh, there will be heat dissipation issues, and maybe your switch gear can catch fire, uh, which is the worst part, by the way. So very, very important that you again select uh, this based on what is the system current. Now, there are some different uh, examples that you can see on your screen. We have uh, there are switch gear which are capable of carrying less than 1000 amperes. Uh, could be 1600, 2000 amperes, uh, 3200 ampere, 4000 ampere, 5000 ampere, and it could go also to 10,000 amperes. There are switch gear available which can carry 10,000 amperes continuously. Continuously, uh, that would be special applications. So that is rated voltage, but these rate sorry rated current, and these rated current is for the assembly. Okay, we are not talking about circuit. We are talking about assembly. Now, what is assembly? Let us understand that. So when I say low voltage switch gear assembly, I mean uh, the complete switch gear combined together. So I have a switching uh, device and to that switching devices, I have connected everything, all the mechanical assembly and it, everything. And it could be one single panel like this you can see here, or it could be the combination of different panels that you can see on your screen. And everything put together is what we call as low voltage switchgear assembly. 
And when I say rated current of my assembly, that I mean that uh, the rated current of all the main circuit, all the main bus bars that are carrying the current. So you see, I have highlighted that with the red color. So all these are same, all these bus bars should carry my rated current of the system. That is 4,000 ampere. Okay. This is assembly circuit is little different than this, which uh, we will see in, in few minutes now. So that is rated current of the assembly. Now let us see what is the rated current of a circuit, which is I and C. It is the maximum continuous current that the circuit is designed to carry when loaded alone safely without exceeding its temperature limit. Now the definition is similar to that of uh, the rated current of assembly. The only difference is that it is only applicable for a one particular circuit and not the complete assembly. Okay, so uh, the rated current of circuit could be uh, same as the assembly or it would be lower than the assembly. I will explain you the difference uh, in the next slide. So what is assembly and what is circuit? Uh, it's, re it's really interesting by the way. So we, we saw the assembly. Okay. And this is the uh, complete assembly that you see. This is the complete assembly. We have different panels coupled together and this forms the assembly and this is capable of carrying 4000 ampere. But if you look closely, we also have a smaller rating MCCB here, right? And maybe let's say my switch gear, the complete assembly is 4000 amp, but this is for sure not 4000 amps. This is, let's say 630 ampere. And this forms a one dedicated circuit. Now this is different from the main circuit. Okay. And when I say rated current of the circuit, I mean this, the capability of this circuit, uh, which is smaller than that of the assembly. Now this could be, yeah, this slide will explain you the difference basically. So whatever is highlighted by red is my assembly rated assembly current, which is 4,000 ampere. And the circuit, this dedicated circuit is capable of carrying 630 ampere. So that is my rated current of the circuit. Similarly, the bottom portion will also have 630 ampere. This will also have 630 ampere. So that is a rated current of the circuit. And that is the difference between assembly and circuit. Whatever you see in the red color represents assembly. Whatever you see in the blue color represents a dedicated circuit within the assembly. Okay, we are not talking anything above or beyond the assembly, but it is within the assembly. Clear? So that is the rated current of assembly and circuit. Now moving on, the next parameter is rated short time withstand current or ICW. Uh, the unit is kiloamps. What is it? It is the maximum fault current that the switchgear can withstand for a specified time without getting damaged. Now this is, so far we were talking about normal system current. When system is normal, there is no fault. Whatever current flows through the system that is referred as normal current. Here, this particular rating, the rated short time withstand current is the rating which talks about the fault current. So when there is a short circuit, your current will go to a very high level. And the this rating specifies that my switch gear should be able to carry that current for a specified time. Again, here we are not talking about continuous current. The rated current is continuous current that will flow in the system. But short time withstand. The, def, the name itself says it's a short time current. Okay, so it, the switchgear will not have uh, the capability to carry this current for a very long time. It is for a specified time and that could be one second or three seconds. So in low voltage switchgear, most of the time you will find it for one second. Uh, three seconds is a, a rare case. So uh, when fault occurs, when short circuit happens, the fault current could go to a very high value. It could go to 40 kilo amperes, 50 kilo ampere, 100 kilo ampere, or 150 kilo ampere. There are circuit breakers available in low voltage, which is capable of breaking even 200 kilo amperes, which is huge. And if that situation occurs in my system, whether my switch gear is capable of carrying that, that is defined by this particular rating. Very, very important. If your system says, your fault level is let's say 100 kilo ampere and if you are getting a switch gear of 50 kilo ampere 
uh, for sure it's it's gonna burn down so very important uh, that you know about this parameter and this is where also most of the people will get confused this is just the withstand capability it will only withstand we are not talking about breaking anything okay breaking means opening of the contacts we are not talking about that we are only talking about current carrying capability of the switch gear it will only withstand it will not do anything with that current clear and this rating must be applicable for each and every part that we are using in the system in the switch gear so the bus bars the breakers the switches whatever it is it should have that capabilities clear so that is rated short time withstand current again i'm i'm pressurizing on that word withstand current it's not the breaking current so moving on uh, this is the example this is how you will see so maybe you will find 65 kilo ampere slash one second or 50 or 60 cycles so the first term indicates the maximum fault current the switch gear can carry which is 65 kilo ampere and for how much time it could be one second uh, it would be mentioned in seconds or it would be mentioned in cycles so one cycle is 20 milliseconds so it could be 50 uh, cycles or 60 cycles this is how the representation will be done uh, for the withstand current so those were the five parameters about the low voltage switch gear in case if you are interested to learn more about switch gear then i have a dedicated course on low voltage switch gear level one now this is a fundamental course a basic course which will help you to build a solid foundation about the low voltage switch gear i'll provide link for it down in the description you can definitely go and check it out it is meant for the beginners it is meant for the people who are new into the switch gear industry or who would like to shift to the uh, switch gear industry the course name is low voltage switch gear level one definitely go and check it out the link is in the description thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you in my next one but till then keep watching keep learning